I want to share with you this morning a principle and a key that has helped so many people to become overcomers. I know there are plenty of overcomers here this morning. Can I hear you shouting loud, amen? I speak on what I call holy madness or horrible disgrace. Holy madness or horrible disgrace. You, you, you have to choose one. <laughs> Holy madness or horrible disgrace. In Psalm 76 verse 10. Psalm 76 verse 10. Holy madness or horrible disgrace. Psalm 76 verse 10. Are we there? If you are not there, say wait for me. Okay, okay, then get there. <laughs> Psalm 76, verse 10. So, surely the wrath of man shall praise thee, the remainder of the wrath shall thou restrain. Let me read that in a language that is clearer. <laughs> it says, Surely the anger of man can be made to praise God. But the other anger that cannot be made to praise God, you should restrain it. Don't use it. Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. So there is a room for holy anger in the Bible. How about madness? Jesus, our Lord and Master, they called him a madman. So if you are a follower of Jesus, a time will come in your life when somebody will look at you and say, You are crazy. A madman. This is what you find in John chapter 10, verse 20. John 10, 20. John 20, chapter 10, verse 20. And many of them said, He had a devil. The devil said Jesus was possessed. He had a devil and he's a mad. Why hear ye him? Say, Listen to this one. He's a madman now. This man is possessed. They talk to Jesus like that. Not only Jesus, even Apostle Paul, the man who wrote the majority of the epistles in Acts chapter 26 verse 24, they also called him a madman. So, if they are calling you a fanatic, a mad person, you are, you are not uh, out of place. You are behaving like your daddy, the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 26 verse 24. Acts 26, 26 verse 24. And as he does speak for himself, Festus, that's a king, with a loud voice. Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. That's Paul. They call him a madman. They call Jesus a madman. There is room for holy anger. There is room for holy madness. The first announcement I want to make to you as young people here today is that uh, right now, even at this very wicked hour where we are, there is vacancy in heaven for mad prophet. Heaven is looking for people who will run into holy rage, holy anger, in order to push the purposes of God forward, in order to advance in their lives. Let me tell you the truth. Many, many, many will never be free to fulfill their destiny until one day you don't just get angry in your spirit and say, sorry, I can't take this anymore. There must be a change. When you get mad at the situation, things begin to move. When you say mad, what do you mean? We mean to be rash. We mean to be over enthusiastic. That's what madness sometimes means. We mean somebody to be fanatical. We mean somebody to exercise an unusual zeal. Men of the world call it madness. We mean somebody to be senselessly foolish. We call it madness. We mean somebody to be irrational, illogical. People call such people mad people. 
In the kingdom of heaven, violence is allowed. Only madness is allowed. Check out all the prophets in the Bible. All of them, you could call them mad people. Because what they were doing was completely irrational to what people do. And if you are a scientist, you find that most, most of those men who discovered things that changed the life of men were men who were moving backward while others were moving forward. They were doing strange things while others were saying, this is mad. The brothers, the Wright brothers who discovered the aeroplane, <laughs> when they started, people said, you people are crazy. Mad person, how, how, how can this fly? Now everybody's enjoying it. The people who discovered the, the motor car, when the first of us started, you know, in the old mot motor car, you come to the front of it and you wind it up as if you are winding a child's toy. You wind it at the front. When you wind at the front, you quickly jump out. <laughs> so that it doesn't run you down. <laughs> That's how the motor car started. When the first of us started, people were laughing at them, say, come on, get rid of this thing, go and buy a horse. Let the horse be pulling you about. But look at it now. In their generation at that time, they looked mad illogical, unreasonable. Those are men who made inventions that have changed our lives. In the kingdom of heaven now, that madness is required. I have to tell you the truth. The fact that you are young does not mean you do not have enemies. There are enemies that are against any young person fulfilling their destinies. That's the truth. Then when you have enemies that bite without remnant. There are some enemies, when they bite you, they, they, don't, they, they won't leave anything behind again. When you have enemies that bite without remnant, you have to get mad at them in order for them to release your destiny. This is a very serious matter. The Bible says, as from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered what? Violence. And the violent take it by what? By force. Because the enemies of our soul is obstinate, is not ready to let anybody go free. This is a serious matter. I went to my first primary school in Akure. I've told you before. There was a boy in that school. They called the boy Irawo. When Irawo was born, <laughs> native doctors from three different villages. They converge in the place where Rawa was born. Native, how they knew he was going to be born, nobody knew. But, well, if some people can read the star of Jesus in the sky and follow the star to where he was born, your own star will not be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> to be read by any witch. And they, saw that. they followed that of Jesus and they saw it. <laughs> so they will see you easily. Of course, three native doctors gathered to where Rawa was born. And when they got there, they saw the baby, they prostrated. All three, old men, gray hair, they prostrated. The parents said, ah, 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 abomination, no, I can't prostrate for a baby. They said, no, this baby that has just been born, that their oracle had told them that it will be the greatest from their village, the greatest in their lineage, and the wealthiest that has ever visited their generation. This is why they have come to pay homage to a small a baby. And they say, don't call him another name, call him Rao. That's how he got his name, Irawa. For those of you who don't speak Yoruba, Irawa means star. Star. Irawa was in primary one while I was in primary two. <laughs> when they say seven questions, answer four. Irawa will answer four questions. Then the other three, he will answer it with the margin. <laughs> so that you will know that he's telling you that he knows it, but it's just because you ask him to take, do only four. <laughs> The lowest mark of Irawo in mathematics was 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Our school was fenced. It's called St. John Primary School. It was fenced. But I, because I say quicksand at the back. I know quicksand, if you enter, you will sink and nobody can bring you out. So, boys don't go there. We don't go there. To go there, you have to jump over the wall. Only God knew what happened that day. How Irawa climbed that wall, nobody knew. How Irawa got to quicksand, nobody knew. All of a sudden, it's only his head somebody could see. 
and it could not be rescued. It was sunk in the quicksand. And nobody could even fetch out his corpse for burial. That was the end of a destiny. Close your eyes, beloved. So any power assigned to terminate my destiny. I want you to shout like thunder. I say shout like thunder. Jesus, open your mouth and declare it. For certain the Kayabo Shantaraboka, thou power of God, move. Thou power of God, move. That's right. In Jesus, then we pray. Sit down a little bit, beloved. God forbid. If, as we're in this multipurpose hall now, all of a sudden, from that door there, the glass broke. Bwah, and a mad cow <laughs> rushes in. God forbid. <laughs> You'll be wasting your time saying, oh cow. <laughs> don't, don't be a naughty boy. <laughs> ah, you have some respect. How can you see us gathered like this? I want to scatter the place. Oh cow, don't scatter this place. Will the cow listen to you? No. no. Because all the methods to arrest that cow is also violent. Is violence that has, that arrests violence. If they put you on the boxing ring and say so on the right corner you find Django Jingo. <laughs> on the left corner you find Rodorondo. <laughs> Both of them are going to fight. Ten rounds, three minutes each. And say so box! And Jingo Jingo began to do like this. And then the other one is doing like this. And eh, touch me. Touch me. And touch me. What will happen? A knockout. You must fight. Even if you fight the battle now that you are young, you're, you still have teeth. If you fight the battle now, then you have, there is energy in your bones. You will enjoy the rest of your days. But if you leave the battle on foot, like many churches that young people are going to now, they are just postponing their battle day. I tell you, write it down. So the Joe Mountain of Fire said, many churches that young people are going to now, they are just postponing their battle day. They are still coming to fight. There are some churches that started in Nigeria in the early 70s, and they were dancing and singing and jumping up, doing all kinds of show. I would say, ha. Huh. It's good. You claim it in Jesus if you get it. But it's more than that too. You should tell these people they are blacks. Whatever they call their names, they are still black people. That they are grandfathers. They were masquerade zoo. Tell them. But this past, this preacher didn't listen to us. They thought they are American messages. That was early 70s. Now, if you go to press city, majority of those doing deliverance there are those people. They just they're just postponing their battle day. That's what they're doing to them. They're still coming to fight. At that time, they will not know how to fight again. At that time, those of you who have started early now, you become their deliverance minister. <laughs> their pastor. That's what happens. So many of them now, those, those that got born again, many, many years after them, they're the ones doing deliverance for them. It's because they just pushed their battles forward. How did I learn spiritual warfare? I tell you too. One day, I, I was in form four. We didn't have GSS, SS, all those things. It's from one to five. I was in form four. I was going on my way. JJ. <laughs> and, and somebody said, 
The one lady said, Daniel, 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 come, 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 come. This, this fry pan on the fire the, the, is boiling. The, the oil is boiling. Please, come and help us remove it. Come and help us remove it. I branched. <laughs> to enter into this kitchen. I was not sleeping. I was wide awake. I was, I was still sleeping. As I entered into the kitchen door, the oil that was being boiled rose like a ball of fire. And it changed direction 90 degrees. <laughs> it went like this. Then it did like this. 90 degrees. And was coming to me. I couldn't move. I was transfixed to the spot. All of a sudden, I had bang on my leg. This right leg. My leg began to roast. I screamed. Yeah, my leg. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the girl who called me ran away. <laughs> then three elderly people came. Hey, hey, hey. One said, okay, okay. When things like this happen, we, we, we apply ogi. Let's do a play ogi. I said, no, no, you don't put ogi. Ogi, what's in the situation? The second one said, it's ice water. It's ice water. I said, no, 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 no. Ice water is bad. Ice water is bad. They one said, eggs. Let's crack eggs and put it there. So, ice water, egg water. Ice water, egg water. Ice water, egg. And they were arguing. So, they were arguing. My leg was roasting. I said, hey. I said, excuse me, please. I like about the decision. This leg, this leg is roasting. Eventually, they agreed on ice water. If I take off my shoes now, that leg is different from the second one. So, I was at home for two months. Because the, legs, the leg could not enter into any shoe to go to school. It was about twice the size of normal shoes. And it was removing water. They were pouring gentian violet, that dark thing, on top of it. Uh, and I was receiving injection. Fact, those were the last injections I had in my life. Since 1974, I've never had any injection. Amen. Now, when I found that ah, this is a serious matter, I won't, I, won't sit, I won't sit at home like this. So immediately the leg got a little bit better. And I wore shoe on the left. And this one had no shoe. So that's why I was going to school. So I was moving slowly because of the leg. It's still painful. We were at the notice board one day in the school. We were looking at the result of those who just passed out. All of a sudden, the cane master showed up. We have a cane master in school. When they say you should enter your class and you don't enter on time, it's a man that brings whip to cane everybody back to class. So the cane master showed up. Then I tried to run. I'd forgotten that I had only one and a half legs. I tried to run. I slipped. Then I broke this hand. So they rushed me to Bobby. So here you are, Daniel Ulukoya. One leg roasted, the other one POP. I was sleeping on my bed that night looking at my hand on POP and my roasted leg and I heard a voice say son if you don't start praying they will kill you don't you see that they don't want you to take your school certificate exam if you don't start praying they will kill you and that your church you are going to is teaching you nothing and it's true they don't teach us anything in our church we dance, 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 dance. Take about ten offerings. <laughs> and the offering, the ushers will not come. You have to dance. And bring it. And by the time they start preaching the messages, everybody starts asleep. Because we have done some vigorous dancing. <laughs> they didn't teach us anything. It was on that bed I learned spiritual warfare. No, yes, no pastor taught me. The kind of prayer we are praying now. It's not that many pastors. I didn't go to any school where I was taught. It was on that bed with a roasted leg 
and with a POP hand, I, I began to learn. If not, I will not be here talking to you today. The enemies of my destiny will have done their worst. There are plenty of you here now. Immediately you become a shining star. You become an enemy of the host of hell and they will pursue you. Many are under pursuit now. But one thing is certain today. Those powers that do not want you to fulfill your destiny, whether they like it or not, they shall, they shall be arrested. 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 In the name of Jesus. That's what somebody has said. If you want to win anything, want to be a winner at anything, you want to win a race, you want to win yourself, you want to win in your life, a little bit of madness is necessary. The fellow who was reading the poem here said, I was reading from 9 p.m. to 3 a.m. It's madness. It's madness now. So if you want to win a race, you want to do something extraordinary, you want to do something others will be reading in the book, you need a little bit of what? Madness. Many of us don't like what is happening in our lives. We don't like what's happening in our family. We don't like what we're going through. We don't like the kind of marks we're scoring. Then if you don't like it, then get mad at it. A change will, happen, will begin to happen. Many of us don't like the state we have, but we're not mad with it yet. When you run mad with it, things will begin to happen. Some disagree with their present state, but they're not mad with it yet. When you run mad with it, things will begin to happen. If you do not like where you are, and you do not hate it and fight it, you remain where you are. That's the truth. Changes do not happen. Changes that will make people celebrate you do not happen until you get mad. Madness. Holy madness. Sometimes, you see, when there is no war, there cannot be peace. It's not all wars that are bad. There are some wars. If you don't fight it, there will be no peace. I read the story of Roman soldiers. You know, there was a time the Roman Empire was in charge of the old world. When the Roman soldiers got to Britain, the United Kingdom, the British soldiers knew that the Romans were coming. And they knew that the Romans were coming by sea. So they were already waiting for them at the beach. The Roman soldiers came down from their boats to the amazement of the British soldiers. The Roman soldiers set their own boats on fire. The boats that brought them, they set it ablaze on fire. Meaning, forward, ever, backward. That is, we are not going back to those boats. It's fight to finish here. Yeah. So when the British people saw people burning the boats that brought them, they got scared. Say, ah, what kind of people are these? That's what we call madness. To be mad is to exhibit certain traits of abnormality. To exhibit undesirable or unreasonable enthusiasm. That's what we call madness. To behave in a way that a normal man will look at you and say, this is stupid, this is foolish, this is unbecoming. That's madness. I was sharing in the adult church last Sunday. When I finished from this university and I made a first class, I had an uncle who was coming to me every day saying, hey, my brother, don't, don't allow them to kill you. Nobody in our family has ever gotten this kind of degree. Nobody has ever had the first class. Please, let us fortify you. Let us, let us build you up with juju so that they won't kill you. And every day he will be coming, he will be crying. Every day he will be coming, he will be crying. Say, ah, hey, what kind of wala is this now? So one day I said, okay, uncle, take me to the Baba. So I took my Bible. I said, let's go. So he drove me and we went to a place. There's a beautiful house at the back. There's a wretched boy squatter at the back. So I thought we were going to enter the beautiful house. No. It was a wretched boy squatters. We went to. We now entered one room. I saw a man sitting on the bed. 
the bed had no mattress. It had mat on it. It was sitting there. I noticed it was eating yam, boiled yam. I was expecting I would find fried eggs there. No. It was eating the yam with palm oil and salt. And we got there. We sat down. My uncle said, Baba, this is that my brother that made first class. I want you to fortify him. Give him terrible juju so that nobody will be able to kill him. So he said that. I started praying and said, Father, please, let get my uncle out of here for two minutes so I can talk to this man. And I said, God will answer my prayer. He forgot something in his car. So he went out. And I looked at him and said, Mr. Man. He said, look at me. He said, look. You say you want to fortify me. Ordinary yam you are eating. You cannot fortify it with eggs. And look. Look at your bed. Look at your house. If you claim you have power to fortify people, why have you not used it for yourself? Say, look, you better stop wasting your time. Surrender your life to Jesus. And I brought out my Bible. At that level, my uncle came in. So I quickly put the Bible away. The man was sitting in shock. So he told my uncle, say, sir, before I open my eyes, <laughs> take this, your stubborn brother, out of this place fast. I don't want to see him again. My uncle started crying, saying, Baba, please help him. Help him. The man chased us out. <laughs> my uncle did not know what chased us out. The violent ticketed by force. When you begin to exhibit holy madness, God may ask you to do things that look abnormal and unthinkable. But it is a process to move you forward. My church, many years back, before, long, long before I even went abroad to study before Mountain of Fire started, that church were very poor in that church too. Nobody has a car. The best person had what to call rally bicycle. But there was one brother in our church. He an was an Igbo man. His name is Amos. What Amos was doing in that church, I don't understand. Because we don't speak Igbo. We don't speak English. It's Yoruba. In fact, the, that, Yoruba that church is so Yoruba that you're breathing there, breathing in and out. It's Yoruba. So, but we can pray. <laughs> and then they say, let us pray. Everybody jumps up. When they call the prayer point in Yoruba, but I must will bend to the next person, my brother, waiting them talk. <laughs> waiting them talk. When they tell him the prayer point, oh no. When brother, Amos begins to pray, within one minute, his shirt is soaked in sweat, his trousers soaked. He prays like a machine. <laughs> it's a long time I've somebody pray like Amos. He pray. Sometimes when we say in Jesus' name we pray, and they you go to bed, but I must be the last person to keep quiet. When, when they call the next one again, so, my brother, wait till they talk. <laughs> he will start again. One day, Sunday service, for the first time in our lives, brother Amos drove a Mercedes Benz to church. And I began to give testimony. He said, he got home that day after the prayer meeting. And Jesus came into his room. And said, Amos, you know yes, you are a rich man, but your wealth had been removed. He said, but what is removing your wealth is planted in your head. He said, right now, I've removed it. He said, Amos, take off your pillow. You will find the agent of darkness that has been removing your wealth there. So Amos took off his pillow and there was this red agama lizard dead under his pillow. And from that day his waist just opened. But that Amos was the first person who brought Mercedes Benz to church. The rest of us who are still praying our Yoruba prayer and we're not serious with it were still there. But one man who got mad got results. Your angels of blessing may be waiting for you now to display a feat of spiritual madness in order for that promise of God to come to pass in your life. You need to get really, really mad in your spirit. 
When the Bible says violent take it by force, it's not, it's not a small matter. It's either you exhibit that holy madness or what to follow will be a disgrace. I was at University of Ibadan for a crusade. And I did some counseling. After the counseling, one professor of, uh, professor of English language, he came to me for counseling. So Dr. Luke, thank God that God has raised somebody like you who is one of us. Uh, so that's why I can come here and share my problems. I said, Prof, what can I do to help? He said, you see, I uh, made plenty of money. I invested the money to go and import certain things. Now they say the thing has disappeared in the middle of the sea. Ah. The ship disappeared. He said, yes, nobody can trace the ship. Ah. I said, okay. Uh, okay, well, I'm, I'm, we're going to pray. So don't worry, we'll pray now. Don't worry. Then he said, Dr. Likoya, uh, that man, there was a man sitting close to us, praying in tongues. He said, Dr. Likoya, said, that man who is talking there, what he is saying does not subject itself to linguistic analysis. <laughs> so I've been listening to him for a while. So what he's saying, this cannot be analyzed linguistically. I said, you can't analyze the Holy Spirit. You didn't understand me. And I said, prof, begin to pray. The enemy has put a rag of poverty in your hand. Command the rag to catch fire. So, I said, you stay there. And then I gave him prayer points. Every rag of poverty in my hands, go back to your senders in the name of Jesus. I said, just be praying that prayer. Prof, you stand there. Be praying the prayer. Why I attend to others? So he stood there and he said, every rag <laughs> of poverty in my hand go back, go back to your sender in the name of Jesus. Every rag of poverty in my hand go back to your sender in the name of Jesus. As he was praying his ice cream prayer like that. <laughs> I left him alone. I continued my walk. All of a sudden, I just had take it, 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 looked at him in disdain. And Ginger didn't say a word. I just stand in there. So, but as he was praying, so when he started praying, so God opened his eyes, he saw one bundle of rag, true, true. So, but as he continued praying, the bundles became two. So, so he now said, you, you this man standing there, you look like an angel. I started with one bundle, that has become two. Is this how you are going to be watching? Are you here to watch me? The angel now said, well, if you want the rags removed, pray with holy madness. It was at that level where he said, I said, and the two bundles flew out of his hands. Beloved, now, if you call any prayer from a professor now, in fact, it will be the first person to be marching up and down once, once they start praying. He won't know he's a professor. It learned the principle of holy madness. When you exhibit holy madness, then, number one, it means you are expecting unusual things and you believe abnormal things. Holy madness makes you to exhibit unusual things and believe abnormal things. That's people they call mad. You say, but, but they have already marked the paper now and they say this person has failed. Holy man, they say, no, it's not marked yet. Ha. That's holy madness. It's like that sister that she will collect salary. She will know what she did with salary. She will collect her salary. She will know what we do with salary. Ha. Then she came to a, a conference and they were teaching prophetic action. So as she was going on the way, she bought a cutlass. Because they taught prophetic action. But the cutlass, when she now got to her room, saying, hey, you the hands <laughs> that are removing my salary, <laughs> when I get them, I cut you off, I cut you off, I cut you off, I cut you off, I cut you off. And she began to cut. 
And she did cotton until she was tired. She slept. The next day, they called her from the village that the aunt of one mama that was living opposite the house was just got mysteriously cut off. Nobody knew what cut the hands on the floor. <laughs> now, if you see somebody pray with a cutlass, what will you say? <laughs> you say, ah. <laughs> hey. <laughs> this, one has fin- this one is finished. <laughs> this one is finished completely. What else? That's only madness. Only madness, number two, would take risk and damn the consequences. Would take the risk and damn the consequences. Only madness will utter strange and unbelievable things. Will be strange, will be unbelievable. The only madness. Jesus spoke to trees. Jesus spoke to the wind. Jesus spoke to storms. He was talking to them like human beings. That's madness. When somebody speaking to trees, it's madness. I remember when somebody, when somebody came to greet me abroad, and I was praying on my fridge. We stopped walking. I didn't know that the reason I was praying is because I didn't have money to buy another one. So, <laughs> I laid down on the floor. I was praying. And he was laughing at me. But he stopped laughing when he had and the fridge started. Stop laughing. Completely. Because they said the compressor was gone. But there's somebody who can speak to a compressor. Only madness is to be immune to mockery. They're laughing at you. you couldn't be bothered. Only madness attacks what people don't see. It attacks what people don't see. Only madness means un- unbelievable boldness. Kind of boldness that is serious. Only madness exhibits righteous anger. Righteous anger. Read your Bible well. When men get angry in the spirit and they begin to pray, things begin to happen. Anger is a blessing when you display only anger which destroys your enemies. Anger is a blessing when it dissolves the mockery of men. Anger is a blessing when you get angry to produce a positive change. Anger is a, is, is a blessing when you use it to cleanse the temple of your life. Anger is a blessing when you use it to resist temptation. And you resist temptation, the anger becomes a blessing. When somebody is trying to mess your life up, and you get angry, say, please don't, don't, don't talk nonsense to me again, I get angry. Then, they know that you are not ready for nonsense. You are not ready for nonsense. Now, it's a difference between somebody, you know, you're a woman, you don't know this man from anywhere, he says, one of somebody somewhere, he wants to do, a, do you a favor, and he's rubbing his hands all over your body. That is the difference between say, excuse me, sir, give me what I want instead of rubbing your hand. And somebody said, Can you take your dirty hands off me now? That's only anger. That kind of kind of anger is allowed, is respected. We need the only madness, only anger today. So that when we begin to operate, people look at us as mad people, unusual people, but that's how you can be free from the forces that are not ready to let you go. Smith Wigglesworth, one of the greatest men of God that has ever visited this planet, was invited to a burial ceremony. Wigglesworth did not go to school. It was his wife that taught him to read. I think that's the advantage of that man. He didn't read too many books. So the people came and they were, it was, it was what you call lying in state. The cops was there. They opened the coffin. People would come pay their last respect and go away. When we go so got to the coffin, instead of bowing or doing anything that is last respect to the dead, he put his hand inside the coffin, held the man and brought him out. I said, Mr. Man, I command you in the name of Jesus, leave! And he dropped the man. The man dropped on the floor, Bagada. Everybody scattered. Those who were bold, we're watching him from the window. <laughs> so he took the man up again a second time. That's madness, isn't it? He took him up a second time. He said, I command you in the name of Jesus, leave! He, he, he left the man. The man fell again right on the floor. He took the man a third time. He said, Mr. Man, 
I want to say this thing one more time. And I do not intend to repeat myself after this one. Say, Mr. Man, I command in the name of Jesus, leave. And the man opened his hand and said, Who died? <laughs> Immediately, the funeral became a revival. Because somebody exhibited only madness. Only madness. You need to exhibit only madness against your enemies. You say, but who is my enemy? I will tell you there. Number one, your enemy is any power, any spirit, any force, any personality working against the fulfillment of your destiny. That's your enemy. Any power, any spirit, any force, any personality working against the fulfillment of your destiny. That is your enemy. Who is your enemy? Your enemy is every power sabotaging the assignment of God for your life. God has an assignment for you. Something is trying to kill that assignment. That's your enemy. Who is your enemy? Your enemy is any power that hates your desire to increase or to improve. That's your enemy. Who is your enemy? Your enemy is any power that is unhappy over your progress. Anytime you are making progress, they are very sad. That's your enemy. Who is your enemy? Your enemy is any power strengthening those things that God wants to remove from your life. Things that God wants to take out, the thing is making it stronger and stronger and stronger. He is your enemy. Your enemy is any power increasing doubt and killing your feet. It's increasing your doubt and killing your feet. It's even making you to question God. Who is your enemy? Your enemy is the evil foundation laid for you by your ancestors. Who is your enemy? Your enemy is the snares prepared to catch you by Satan. And therefore, Satan be- becomes our eternal enemy. What you need to do this morning? Number one is to surrender your life to Jesus. Number two is to repent from every known sin. A sinner can never be violent spiritually. Number three is to exhibit that holy anger. Number four is to engage in violent prayer. And number five is to exhibit violent faith. And last but not the least, to exhibit violent desperation. Violent desperation. Those are the people who get results. You must have heard me sharing this many times. Let me share it again here today. I like to share it because the person... It's a person very close to me, and I see his life moving forward. My friend's name was Aremu. Aremu failed on available examinations. The only exam my friend Aremu did not fail was the one he did not take. Aremu did the school certificate exam. The ex, as external candidate, he did it almost six or seven times, and, and he did six subjects. He got F9 parallel in all six subjects for six consecutive years. Every subject, F9. F9. Before he started doing the Nigerian one, he had done the British GC, London GC. You know, London GC, they have a mark lower than F, they call it H. H means hopeless. So that means you can score something say, worse than failure. They'll, they'll give you H. At this, they say, don't bother to try again. It, was, it got so bad that there was a particular year that Aremu did not take the school certificate exam. Waek sent him result that he failed. <laughs> Amen. Aremu attended a prayer meeting where they spoke about the violent ticket by force. 
When he got home, he prayed, Father, I want to know every secret behind my problem. Certainly, my life is not supposed to be going like this. My, the foundation of my life is supposed to be stronger than this. He prayed. And as he prayed, 1 a.m., the Lord opened his eyes. And he saw all his books on the table. And the sixth wife of his father was sitting on it. Because the father had only six wives. Was sitting on it. Wow. It's okay. The next morning he packed his bags. Took his Bible. Went straight to the hometown. All the six wives were living in a single building. All of them. There is a single corridor separating them. They have their separate separate rooms. Including Aremu's mother. Aremu's mother is the first born. The first wife. Sorry. When Aremu arrived, the eyes were red. Welcome, Aremu. No answer. Didn't answer nobody. His own mother to when he saw his eyes, quickly ran away. Aremu waited there, walking up and down the corridor until 12 midnight. By 12 midnight, Aremu started walking up and down. Ha! What did Aremu not call that day? He called fire. He called thunder. He called lightning. He called sulfur. He called pepper. He called honey. It was a terrible night. Nobody went out to the toilet. Nobody could come out. And he did it from 12 to 6. That's what we call violence. Holy madness. 12 to 6. At 6 a.m. Now I said, special announcement, all of you. I'm going back to Lagos now. If I fail any other examination, I shall be back here. And it shall be more terrible. And you know, Aremu never failed again. Because of what? Only madness. Only anger. I can never forget that day in worry, which I've shared with you before. When I began to read my Psalm 8, and the man began to translate it, then I knew that ah, this man here today, O oh Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the heart. Say, God, my papa. Your name, Nawao. <laughs> Everybody for this word, they see. See, you don't carry your glory. Come sit down from every. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength. Say, ah, small picky mouth, come the vomit power. Small. So out of the mouth of babe and suckling, that was holding power. So that can that can steal the avenger. So I say small picking mouth is the vomit power where they panebit the enemy. <laughs> Until we got to our Matthew, as from the days of John the Baptist. Until now, kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take by force until he gave that one his own interpretation. That the people will not go gree. Then take them by gri gri. Rise up on your feet now. There are people here this morning who need to get really, really mad in their spirit. If you come from a polygamous home, Pray the way you have never prayed before. If you find that you are being tormented in your dream, pray the way you have never prayed before. If a white garment prophet has told you before that you are no banje, ha, pray the way you have never prayed before because they themselves they are banje, so they know you. If if your name is the name of a dead relative, pray, pray seriously. If you find that you work hard, you work so hard, but you don't get results, pray the way you've never prayed before. Immediately we begin to pray just now. Let me tell you what will begin to happen. All those people that have been tied down, that you can't move, you can't, even if you move, you can't move too quickly. All those people, one by one, you will be hearing ropes breaking. <laughs> and those people will be released completely. 
when the ropes break, people will be completely released. I know that there are people here today. Your coming here today will be an eternal testimony. <laughs> All eyes closed. But you see, if you are here this morning and you are not born again, I'm not asking whether you go to church or you don't go to church. You forget that one. You know you don't have a living relationship with Jesus. You are not born again. You have not just surrendered your life to Jesus. Run quickly to the altar here so that I can pray with you. Without you making Jesus your friend, you can't arrest any arrester. You can't disgrace any part that wants to disgrace you. Just come out of here very quickly. Don't waste time. Come out here and give me a altar. I want to pray with you. You are not born again. You want to surrender your life to Jesus today. You too want to put to shame all those powers that want to put you to shame. Just find a way very quickly to the altar here. Run, 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 run. We don't have time to waste. We want to go and pray. Find a way very quickly to the altar. Jesus is waiting for you here. Jesus is waiting for you here. I still somebody in this meeting. You actually followed your friend here. But you see, you are missing an opportunity if you don't come out here very quickly. Because today, the chain that has kept you stagnant, God wants to break it. But you are still there, not coming out. So I'm going to wait for you for one minute to join them. If you want to remain in the bondage, then it's not the fault of this man of God. You followed your friend here. You are supposed to be at the front here now. So that the Lord can break this, your yoke forever. Just find a way very quickly to the altar. Don't waste time. You may not have this opportunity again. Just appear at the front. I congratulate you. You've taken the most important decision in life. Just bow down your heads and say what I'm going to say now after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. I know you care for me. I know you brought me here to bless my life. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye-bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now I'm going to pray with you. Father, I thank you for your children here. Who have taken the most important decision in life. Father, lay your hands upon them. This decision you've taken today shall be permanent in your life. The Lord will keep you standing by his power. And he will do great things for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Just if you are the front, open your eyes and look at me. You've taken the most important decision in life and I congratulate you. Listen very carefully. Immediately we close. Don't go home. Just come back here. I want to pray more with you. I want to take your data. I want to be praying for you by name so that the angels of blessing will begin to visit your life. So come immediately we close and give us some data so I will be praying for you by name and the Lord will begin to move your life forward in a new way. I pray that as you have taken this decision, it will be permanent in your lives. Amen. You may go back to your seat now. But immediately we close, find your way here. God bless you as you do so. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We are here to wage what? War. Now, as we start praying, if you are here in this meeting and you can still remember that somebody caused you, you remember the cause, the person said you will not do well, you will not prosper. You remember clearly somebody issued curses on you. You remember those curses. Maybe it's your parent. Maybe it's your stepmother. Somebody. Just find a way to the altar. Be on your knees. Pray the way you have never prayed before. This is not a day to negotiate. This is a day to pray like thunder and like fire. Maseka thunder yabo shenderabasa. Can you now shout this loud and clear? Those curses, they are powers to waste life. Can you shout with the burning anger? You are a liar! In the name of Jesus! Just open your mouth and begin to decree it. Ah!
the power of God. Move, 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 Yes, something is happening here. Something is happening here. The serpent of destruction. Lose your hold. Lose your hold. Lose your hold. Masapanda kaya ba shantaraba? In Jesus' name we pray. See what is happening now. I told you. That's right. There are seven persons here. Your life has been controlled since you were a baby. But right there where you are, the power of God is falling upon you. And the yoke of that control is broken now. That is number one. Number two. Number three. That's number four. That's right. The power of God is coming upon you. Number five. Number six. Ah, and that's the seventh person. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray right now that the serpent assigned to this sister to appear in her dreams and to disgrace her. In the name of Jesus. In the name that is above all names. In the name of Jesus. You the serpent come out. In the name of Jesus. Yes, he's coming out, he's coming out. You can't stay. That's right. Father, I pray. For all who are here today and the enemy has tampered with the brain. Ribo sepia le cantandayaba. Dakayabo shenderabo center. Right there where you are. Receive your brain back. Receive your deliverance. 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 The power of God. Move. 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 In the name of Jesus. Aha. Father, I pray for these children at the altar here. Any curse under which you labor, I break that curse now. In the name of Jesus. Anything said against your life under satanic anointing, I cancel it now in the name of Jesus. Receive power to move forward, 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 in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let me go back to your seat rejoicing now. That yoke has been broken completely. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As you pray this next prayer, if you are that person here, there is this voice telling you, you will soon die. You will soon die. You have been resisting it, but you find that it's, it's, it's not going away. Just find a way to the altar. Be on your knees. The voice has been telling you, you will soon die. You don't know where it's coming from, but it's speaking to you. It's talking about dying. Just find a way to the altar and be on your knees. We're not here to joke. We're here for serious business. Very, very serious business. There's somebody here who needs to exhibit anger now. So that the pattern in your family line will not make you another example. You need to be angry now. Pray with merciless violence. Let your voice thunder. 
Don't. This is not a time to joke. This is not a time to play. If you pray here, you lose your voice, and this agent of darkness let you go. You've made a good bargain. Everybody will shout this loud and clear. Don't say, I don't think this concerns me. I think you should pray with fire and with thunder. Say, domestic witchcraft. You are a liar. In the name of Jesus. Don't negotiate. Open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. Basa ponde kaya bo shente rabo komponde raba. Reapole ke shente yaba. Something is happening over there, something is happening over there. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus name we pray. Now you the power from the waters. Hear the word of the living God. You have done enough havoc. You cannot stay any longer. You the power start moving forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. But not making any progress. Hear the word of the Lord. You cannot stay there anymore. You the terror of the night. They have been harassing people. You cannot stay there anymore. Your time has expired today. Any power holding anyone down to one spot. The power of marital stagnancy. The power of academic stagnancy. The power of destiny stagnancy. You cannot stay there anymore. Maseka ponda raboko sentenda yaba. Ribo shente rabasa. Yes. Yes, you must be released. That which you have eaten or swallowed in the spirit realm, that you are not even aware of, the power of God is coming upon you now. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that's right. Yes, you must be released. Something is happening over there. Yes. Yes. That's your senior sister that has projected witchcraft into your being. I separate her from you now. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Yes. Within the next few seconds, 21 persons are going to receive an uncommon deliverance. For the power of God will hit them where they are. And what nobody has achieved in your family life, the power of God will hit you where you are. And you will achieve it. In the name Jesus, the power of God. That's number one. That's number two. That's number three. That's four. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yes, yes. That which is in your stomach, that the enemy is using to arrest you. Vomit it, vomit it, vomit it, it must go. Vomit it now. Somebody have that sister over there. Vomit it now. (laughs) 
16 17 18 it's coming out it's coming out the poison you have swallowed that has kept you down it's coming out 19 20 21 thank you jesus father i decree upon your children here that any power that wants you to die shall die you shall not die but live to declare the works of god the power of god shall come upon you thank you heavenly father in jesus name we pray as we pray this next prayer if at this meeting you know you are ready for marriage but wrong people are coming or no one is interested find your way to this altar here now wrong people coming nobody is interested find a way to this altar now a yoke is about to be broken the powers that do not want your wedding bells to ring is about to be disgraced everybody will shout this loud and clear there is a pattern to be broken to pieces of sadness in my family life can you shout it with any anger break in the name of Jesus open your mouth and decree it the power of God is moving here. In the name of Jesus. Aha, 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 aha. In Jesus, then we pray. Father, I pray for your children here at the front that within the next few weeks, begin to receive your testimony. Every enemy of your marital life, let those enemies be disgraced in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. Many things are happening here today. Many things are happening here today. As you pray this next prayer, if you are in this meeting, you have certificates. You can't get a good job with it. Find a way to this altar too. And be on your knees. Have a good certificate, but you can't find a good job with it. Find a way to the altar and be on your knees too. Or even if you are seeking for a profitable employment, find a way to the altar and be on your knees as well. Everybody will shout this loud and clear. The way I'm going to shout my whole. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Open your mouth, open your mouth and decree it. In Jesus' name we pray. Just a few at the front, stretch forward your two hands. I decree upon your life that anywhere they have closed the gate against you, I command the gate to open. Anywhere they say there is no way for you, let them mysteriously begin to search for you. The kind of job that will move your destiny forward, possess it now, possess it now, possess it now, possess it now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. As you pray this next prayer now, 
if you are in this meeting and you have these evil visitations at night, they are always attacking you, attacking your dream life. Strange things happening to your dream life. Strange things attacking your body. Please find a way to the altar. It is time for those strange things to go back to the senders. Everybody will shout this too loud and clear. Those of you at the front, pray with holy madness. Pray the way you have never prayed before. Jesus said, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. It's the serpent and scorpions we want to face now. Say, serpents and scorpions! Assigned to bite my life! In the name of Jesus! Serpents and scorpions. Continue, continue. Yes, 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 yes. No power of move. In Jesus' name, we pray. Those of you at the altar here begin to breathe in the fire of the God of Elijah and breathe out. Anything the enemy is using as a ladder against you. In, out. In, out. In, out. Yes, that's the fire. It's going from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. The fire is challenging every power that has been challenging your destiny. Yes, 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 yes. Aha. Enough is enough. They have harassed you for too long. Yes, you the harassing serpents and harassing animals. Go back to your senders. Back to your senders. Go, 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 to, go back to your senders. Go back to your senders now. In the name of Jesus. Aha. The spirit of your dead mother that has entered into you. I separate you from her now. Yes, that's the power of God coming upon you. Yes. You must be set free. 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 Father, I thank you for your children here at the front. Beginning from now, every evil visitation to your life is dead. I send them back to the senders. Back to the senders. Back to the senders. Back to the senders. In the name of Jesus. I send them back to the senders. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's so many things that are happening here today. A lot of transactions taking place in the spirit realm. A lot of breakthroughs happening to people's happening to people's lives. A lot of things that you never thought could shift position. The Lord has forced them to bow, to beg, and to shift position. Now. This prayer is for 200 persons who will shine. Amen. And no power can prevent their shining. Shout this loud and clear now. Hunters of darkness. Shooting my stars. Please don't, don't negotiate with this prayer, please. I beg you. Can I hear the sisters here shouting loud and clear? Is that the best you sisters can do here today? 
Brothers, shout it louder than the sisters. Everybody together now. Shout it like thunder. Jesus, deal with your hunters.